there. My name is Adrienne Brown, and I am here to talk to you about homeschooling and gardening. To me, homeschooling is just like gardening. Every child needs a certain amount of individualized attention so that he or she can thrive in life. The homeschooling choice provides just the right atmosphere for the diligent parent to successfully provide a tailor-made education, which in turn can equip the average child to succeed in all that he does. Oh, don't get me wrong, this gardening mindset is not just for the homeschooling parent. No, indeed, the gardener mindset can be implemented by any caring adult that has, it, that has influence over children. Because the responsible loving adult must be the nourisher, the one constantly cultivating positivity in the life of the child. So you and any adult can effectively nourish a child if you think like a gardener. As a homeschooling parent, a public school teacher, or whatever capacity you may have been given access to children, you can be their encourager. You can use spirit-filled words to help a child grow straight, just as the tender plants depend upon the gardener to gently care for them. The average child depends upon the responsible adults in their lives. Every child needs empowerment and has a need to be lifted up every day. Now, I am not saying that this is an easy task, no, on the contrary, but I am saying if we set our minds as a gardener does every season, you know, when, he, when he's thinking about that new vegetable gar garden or his beloved annuals, well, as parents, teachers, and influential adults, we can also plan and set that nourishing environment in the lives of our young people. Sometimes young people need us to help pluck up the weeds in their lives. I needed this kind of help when I was, a ele when I was in the elementary all the way up to uh, middle school. I can remember longing for something or someone to step in and to help me. I had many dreams and I wanted to try everything in school like dance, choir, acting, home economics, sewing, baseball, everything. I had the drive, the talent, and the desire. But what I lacked was a responsible, active adult support system to help me reach my goals. I needed an adult to help me pay the cost for outside activities or even to drive me to certain events. Consequently, since I didn't have this support system in place, my future illustrious career never made it out the uh, doors of the school. For some reason, my mother was not one to encourage my dreams and she certainly didn't pour positivity into my life. To add to the problem, I didn't have a father around to lean on, so I was pretty much left to figure it out on my own. But don't get me wrong, God did send a few gardeners into my chaotic life. They were essential to help me to, to help pluck me up from the smothering weeds that were threatening to choke out the youthful fire burning inside me. One of those gardeners was my grandmother. Um, if it had not been for her words in my ears, encouraging me to do something with my life, to be somebody, if it had not been for her, only God knows where I'd be. She constantly goaded me to leave my toxic surroundings behind. Every time she would point out the negative influences that were whispering in my ears, I felt the briars of entrapment loose. Her strong words kept me from being overwhelmed and swallowed up in the tangled mess of my surroundings. Still, my grandmother only had so many resources, which meant I still needed a hand up out of those weeds. Because at that young age, I could feel the seeds of nothingness trying to grasp at me from every nook and cranny. Just imagine a young child trying to make it, trying to choose the clean and narrow path, but the weeds and thorns are attacking. 
attaching themselves to their hopes and their dreams ever so fast. I desperately needed a way out. And that way out came from two other dedicated gardeners, <laughs> um, my high school friend and her uncle. He was an executive at the Bank of America Corporation and she worked for him. Well, this friend encouraged her uncle to hire me and this changed my circumstances tremendously. These gardeners truly poured into my life, lifted me up just high enough for me to escape the briars that were sticking fast in my flesh. By now you may be tired of my gardening analogies, but I am using gardening metaphors because, because it seems so appropriate to a child's life to me, with at least to mine. But because without loving, persistent, and committed adults in a child's life, that child may not bloom properly, or worst, he will grow up crooked and stunted. Just as a gardener is quickly covered in garden is quickly covered in thorns and, and weeds if it's left unattended, a child without guidance will be smothered from the pressures of life. He will aimlessly flounder around, trying to be all that he can, and at the same time trying to duck the pitfalls that they are sure to face. This happened to my brother. This is why we need responsible adults in our in our corner to help us when we could when we could or else we're gonna lose the fight. As a matter of fact, many do lose the fight and are buried beneath the briars of life for real, for real, for real. This is not how it should be for a young person. Therefore, we chose to homeschool our children because we want to give them all the support that they need to thrive in the world that we brought them into. Through homeschooling, my husband and I were able to allow our older four sons to dream their biggest dreams ever. As we are also doing with our three adopted children, we worked hard to let our boys experience what it feels like to have loving, supporting gardeners in their lives. Likewise, we are offering the same nurturing environment for our three adopted children, giving them the same chance to flourish in their own separate time. We refuse to let them be plucked up and shifted back and forth any longer. No, once they were transplanted here with us, it is where they will stay and grow, be nurtured until they are healthy and mature enough to live on their own. Today, young people must face so many obstacles. That is always a battle for them to maintain proper balance, especially when they are trying to do the right thing. Think about it. Young people who are not only thinking about themselves but want to do what is right for their families and they want to do the right thing for society, well, they need adult support. They need the concerned care of a master gardener-like parent or, 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 or an adult. So, as a fellow teacher, parent, encourager, and gardener of youth, let me encourage you to start to cultivate the soil that is the lives of the young people that you have influence over. Whether they are your biological kids, adopted kids, or kids that you have a mentoring relationship with, you, as the adult, must find ways to enter their world. Find some common ground to act as a life-saving amendment to, to that young life. God knows a lot of them need it. Here are a few practical things for you to do as you are working on the soil of the young person's life. First, always look to their future success. How are you to do that? Be sure to purposefully nurture their hopes and their dreams as you help them to navigate through life. Do not haphazardly work in a child's life. They need you to be all in to help them su succeed. When a gardener put the seed into the ground, he does so with the hope of a future crop. So he pours all of his gardening ex expertise and resources into the soil surrounding those precious seeds. And in the same vein, this means children will need you to pour all of your adult know-how and wisdom into helping them to find the right resources. And the right 
and the right means to reach their goals, such as helping them to arrange meaningful internships, mentor relationships, and connecting them with valuable work programs. They may also need you to teach them how to talk on the phone to a prospective employer or a future college. Further, they may need you to show them how to properly fill out a college application or a job application. They just may need you to reach down in your pockets and pay the fees for those essay, for that SAT or that ACT test. Otherwise, because of their home life, they would not be able to take that, those tests. All these things are how you can nourish and pour into the hopeful young life. Most importantly, a gardener doesn't move the seeds around from space to space either. Likewise, we must nurture our children right where they are. If we have adopted them and brought them into our homes, then we can give them a healthy diet of goodness that will feed their souls and enrich their minds in a way that will encourage personal growth. Oh, but realize that when you are the sole caregiver, this work may become hard and tedious, and you may begin to feel tempted to give up. Yet, I promise you, if you stick with it, you will see a grand harvest in their lives. Additionally, mentors and teachers, you must wholeheartedly commit to nurturing that young person as long as they are in your sphere of influence. And secondly, in order that they may thrive, all kids have the same basic needs. They all need protection. They all need a safe, clean, secure, and enriching environment to live. They need food, clothing, and a bed to lay their heads. If a child doesn't have these basic needs met, he or she will not be able to function at their highest capacity. So please forgive me, but here we are back at the gardening metaphors again. I just can't, I can't pass this one up because as any master gardener knows, young plants are the same way. If we, if they are not protected from the elements or have a safe, secure place from the animals who want to eat them, or if they are not planted in a soft, well-nourished bed of soil, they will not mature to produce any fruit. They will wither and die. Young kids are highly vulnerable to withering and losing all hope of success if they do not have responsible, caring, gardener-like adults in their lives. As I said in the beginning, we choose to homeschool our kids so that we could be that constant cultivating influence for them. In parenting our children, we try to give them the necessary tools to help them walk towards their dreams. Oh, our choices have not all been perfect, but all of our decisions and choices were made with our children in mind. This is a common characteristics of a true gardener. <laughs> Here we go again. What does this mean for you? Well, it means that when you are intentionally trying to help a young person, you must set your mind upon change. Your goal should always be to see positive change in that young person's life. Although sometimes as teachers or mentors, you will not know what that child is lacking from their home, nor will you immediately know exactly how you can help that child. But what you can do is to continue to sow seeds of trust and empowerment into them. You can purposefully nurture um, your relationship with that child until you can see growth in their lives. Most importantly, it takes patience, kindness, and love to help young people to reach the goals that they have set in their lives. Likewise, this too is like the gardener who cultivates, plants, and nourishes the rich black soil. At first, it seems as if nothing is happening, but the master, master gardener knows that underneath, there is sprouting new life in that dirt. So to the mature adult knows that the potential of the child must be developed before he will see any fruit of success. 
So let's stick with it and pour into these young lives. Thank you for joining me today. And I hope and pray that you can grasp the truths that I am trying to convey using these gardening analogies. My name is Adrian Brown, and I do wish you a bumper crop. <laughs> See you soon. Bye.